Three golden eggless. Check the description link down below. What is going on guys, Slickby here, and today we're going to be talking about the Swing Fire. Yes, the lovely Swing Fire. You guys voted for this vehicle. It is a, well it's the new tier, what is it, tier 5, right? I always say tier 8, it's a BR8. Uh, ATGM for Britain. <sighs> why is this not a live commentary? It's like, well I'll tell you why. The Swing Fire is a pile of shit. Uh, I, this is obviously my opinion. Um, but there are some hard facts that uh, show you that this thing is a piece of shit. Now, I think that this is a good gameplay to prove it, right? So you see here that I just shoot the leopard. That's not my issue. You see the missile path? So these have a minimum range of about 200 meters, and what I mean by that is you can't hit anything within a 200-meter circle from yourself, and the reason for that is the missiles have to shoot upward and then come back down. And then when anything's super close to you anyway, sh hitting it is super difficult because it comes up and then it comes down hard and then you have to correct it and whatnot. Shooting at anything far away, again, you might hit ridges just because the missile comes out and dips down super low and then kind of pops back up to change course. And I understand why it does that. Um, but comparative to other ATGMs in this game, other ATGMs don't have that issue. They don't have to deal with that. One of those being the IT-1, which in real life had a minimum engagement range. Why did it have a minimum engagement range in real life? Well, you know the rail that the ATGM sits on? It wasn't flat in real life. It was actually uh, 5 degrees facing up. I'm pretty sure it was 5 degrees. I may be wrong with that, but I know it was facing up a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, in reality, the Sheridan and the Hot should be the only missiles that can fire f forward. But regardless, whatever. Now, some bright sides, I guess, of this is uh, it's on a decently mobile chassis. Other than that, though, the chassis has a high silhouette. Um, it has very little power-to-ton ratio, so you can't really climb many hills. And, uh, yeah, it just has overall trouble maneuvering. So you can see I can't shoot sideways like I can in Erect and Jagdpanzer or anything with a turret. Um, put a shot into the back of his turret, and it knocks out his gun breach, and then I miss the second shot. 3P is kind of the best way to shoot this thing, in my opinion. It's just really weird. But you see, now I'm stuck here reloading. He's going to turn around. So T10s figure I dip out. It's just, it's a high silhouette, low power to ton ratio. You can't, it doesn't have a traversable turret. It's kind of like an early stage ATGM. It's not really super effective, in my opinion. You can get kills with it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, like, I was getting about one a game. But that was the max that I would get, was about one a game. And... Doing a live commentary, just compiling all those together, just didn't seem like it would be fun to me. I don't, I don't think it would have been a great video. So I figured I'd just talk a little bit about the swing fire and then show you some gameplay that actually shows it. So uh, we see the leopard here, and I was like, oh, I can actually shoot over that ridge. Now, the best way to play this thing is uh, definitely to try to get hold down as much as you can and shoot over ridge lines and try to make your engagement super long range. So that's the end of the swing fire footage for this game. So again, I'm not going to title it super like swing fiery, like it's not a swing fire gameplay. We're just talking a bit. But now we have some chieftain gameplay and I get to talk about what I really want to talk about. So again, like I said, swing fire, I would not grind for it um, unless it's the last thing you have to grind for. Uh, I would definitely say the chieftain and the falcon are both more, more like more usable vehicles. The chieftain is one of the best tanks in the game. I'd say it's probably second or third best in the game. Uh, right up there with the leopard and the ZSU 57. So... I don't know. <laughs> they're both, they're, I mean, they're all really good tanks. They're all usable in different things. And notice how I said that with literally no shake in my voice. The ZSU-57 is, is an MBT, and it's one of the best in the game. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it's just something we have to accept. So, again, what what are some issues that I've been having? Well, just to get this out of the way real quick, uh, I hope this video does look good. I'm still messing with render settings and stuff like that. I don't know. Okay, so just comment if you feel the need to. Uh, it's, it's really difficult. You'd think it, think it'd just record the game and then put it up, and it'd be, you know, the best quality. But it doesn't work that way. There's a lot of other factors to go into it. But yeah, uh, what 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 are we trying to say? What was I talking about? Top tier 
So I uploaded a video today, which is yesterday now, when you're seeing this video, about it's titled Worst Teams. And that wasn't to say that everybody on that team was a bad player. Uh, I wasn't attacking anybody on the team or anything like that. I was just saying I had a hard time playing the Leopard today. Uh, you know, I was just con constantly losing. And the top tier meta is very interesting nowadays. A lot of people are playing the Leopard who shouldn't be, if that makes any sense. A lot of people have golded their way up to the Leopard um, because the new one came out. For some reason, people think that, you know, it's the new Leopard's going to be better than the old Leopard, which I found that it's not really any different. It's the same tank. It's just now that you have two, you can actually have a full top tier lineup. But other than that, it's not any different, really. And it's caused a lot of new players to come up to the Leopard's spot. And there's an influx of players playing Tier eight, tier 5 Germany, 8.0 Germany. And they're really, really losing games. Like, I mean, losing games hard. And part of it is, it's not so much the fact that you can get in a Leopard and get kills or whatnot. It's, it's not so much of that. It's the fact of what they're playing against. And what they're playing against are tanks that... Uh, the IT-1. Let's just... Elephant in the room, the IT-1. The IT-1 is overpowered. It's broken. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And I've never said that, really. I've tried to stray away from it and say, like, there's ways to counter it. And, of course, I've killed IT-1s. I've killed countless IT-1s. I've been killed by countless IT-1s. It's broken, guys. And, uh, you know, I'm <laughs> done pussyfooting around it. It's fucking broken. And that's not the reason Leopards are losing. It's not because the IT-1's broken. But it's a very hard thing to overcome, especially as being a new player, is the IT1s. And I would love to tell you guys how to kill them, but I don't fucking know. Uh, I, I run into IT1s all the time that I cannot kill. And it's not because I can't kill them because I can't aim. It's because they're behind rocks and you can't shoot over the rock, but they can because their missile sits higher than the actual tank. And when the missile sits higher than the actual tank and the missile is guided by mouse aim and has no bullet drop or trajectory, it, it just hits you and that's it. Good night, sweet prince. You can't come this way or you're dead. And if you go that way, you're fucking dead. That's it. And it's on a tr it has a turret, so it can look 360 degrees. So it doesn't matter if the spot isn't amazingly well suited for a non-turreted thing. It doesn't matter. It has a fucking turret. It can sit in any spot pretty much. That's the thing with the other ATGMs in the game. They can't sit in any spot. I guess you could say the Sheridan, but the Sheridan has a gun. So if the ATGM can see you, you can see its turret and kill its crew. You know, you can shoot the gun. It doesn't work with the IT-1. You have to shoot the rail, and the rail is the tiniest fucking thing with the most broken hitbox and health bar or whatever the hell ever they deal with health. It doesn't die. <laughs> and if you do manage to black the rail of the IT-1, you have 26 seconds with an ace crew to get to it. <laughs> or else it's repaired and it's going to fucking kill you. So, you know, oh, watch this, by the way. What other tank in the game can really do this? Three-piece shot on the move backwards <laughs> up a hill. Like, what? I love the Chieftain. But it's really messed up. You know what I mean? The IT-1 is really broken. Uh, and a lot of people say the ammo rack isn't working too well with it. But I haven't had trouble killing the IT-1 when I can finally see its hull and stuff. It's just that it gets hulled down so much. So the reason I bring this up is because the only way to fix the IT-1, in my opinion, is give it a minimum engagement range. So it can't shotgun people. It doesn't want to rush so much. And because, uh, like I said, in real life, it was it tilted up a bit. And it wasn't a very successful tank in real life, meaning that the fact that it's the most successful tank in War Thunder right now is little... It's got me thinking. Why is it the most successful tank in War Thunder but it was a only a two-year-long project that didn't see much service in real life. When we have tanks like the Rakuten Jagdpanzer that served 30 years. Um, and then the Rakuten Jagdpanzer was replaced by the Jaguar, which is a Rakuten Jagdpanzer, quote-unquote, with a hot missile. You know, So these are platforms that are still in use today almost. And uh, that thing is being outshined by the IT-1, which had a two-year service life. And I, I get the fact that... like. Uh, you know, IRL is not the best way to, to say this game. Like, obviously, this game isn't realistic. You know, tanks wouldn't be sitting on a hill like I am right now in real life. I get that. But 
I think there should be a little bit of weight there. There's some issues, I think, and uh, that's the big thing at top tier is, you know, ATGMs are really crazy. I think another way to fix them is give deployable smoke launchers, give them to the MBTs that they have. Um, but, yeah, what do you guys think? What are, what are your guys' opinions? Uh, do you guys like the swing fire? Do you, if you really want a full gameplay on the swing fire, like live commentary like I'm used to, I will do my best to try to get one, but I'm telling you it's not going to be that exciting of a gameplay. It's just... It's a boring tank to play. You got to sit in the back. You got to get hold down, and you got to take whatever you can get that's coming your way. Most of the time, it just doesn't work. So, yeah, spend your boy slick. We're gonna talk about one more thing in this video, but we're just waiting for it to approach. I'm in a chieftain on the hill. Let's talk about this real quick. There's a T10 on the foot. I can't see him right now. I'm looking for him on my screen, uh, on my monitor, like I'm while I'm watching this video. I don't see him yet. There he is. Okay, so you see him, and I see him. I put a shot, gets eaten by the spaced armor on the side of the tank. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to aim a little bit higher, right? Watch this shot. Right through. I hit the cannon breach, the loader, vertical, and horizontal turret drive. I'm reloading again. Watch this. I put a shot right underneath and yellow the ammo rack. How many seconds is this? I know I'm about to take another shot. I was just, I just paused there for a little while. I'm not going to lie. I'm not confused as how he killed me, but he repaired a black cannon breach, a loader, everything that fast. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. So yeah, guys, just some food for thought. What do you guys think about top tier battles? What is your biggest gripe of this game? Let me know in the comment section down below and, uh, I'd love to see your opinions. I'd love to see what you're talking about, what the issues for you are. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. It's been your boy Slick. Also, comment down below with what you'd like to see next. Uh, for tomorrow's video, or today's maybe, I don't know. Depends how fucking excited I am to work. I'm excited for the next lineup. Uh, we got voted 120 votes on the uh, Sturm Mill and the Duck, which is that's an awesome combo, and I'm definitely going to take that out. But comment down below with what you'd like to see next, and I'll do my best to uh, play it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.